Hi, I'm Jessica Drake. I'm the 4-H agent here at North Carolina Cooperative Extension Cumberland County Center. And today I'm going to be sharing with you the glorious craft of soap making. So first, what do you need in order to make soap? Well, back it up a little bit. Why should we make our own soap? Just like we are thinking about our health and what we put inside of our body, what we use on the outside of our body definitely um, matters as well. So today we're going to take a look at some of the materials we would need and one of the easier processes that we can use to create our own soap. So first, what do we need? In order to create soap, um, you would need a number of different things. Um, for today's purposes, we are actually going to do, use the melt and pour method, which is always already a pre-mixed um, solution that we can utilize to create our own soap. While this is definitely an easier method than um, going through the lye and the goat milk um, process, I will touch base on how to go about that if you are interested in doing that method. So first, what are we going to be using today? So the first thing you will need is, of course, a heat safe um, container in order to heat your, um, soap, your soap base. And you need uh, also your soap base. So today, because we are, you know, we are Cooperative Extension, we love um, utilizing what resources we have available, we are going to be using a goat milk base. Um, the reason that we use this is just because it is um, readily available. We've got a number of um, goat farmers here in the area, but you can also, if you aren't able to uh, acquire goat milk on your own, there's also some different online suppliers and you can also get it in a powder form and mix it down to, um, to meet your needs. So we've got our goat milk, um, our, our base. The other thing that we need is a mold or something to put our goat milk in or goat milk uh, soap in. And so for today, we're gonna to be using a really plain a silicon mold. I really uh, prefer silicon just because of the um, ability to pop things out after you get done using them. And also they clean up very easily, which is also you know a good thing to keep in mind. So like I said, if we were doing this method, if we were actually bringing in the goat milk and adding the lye ourselves, <clears throat> one of the reasons that we didn't do that today is just because we'll be having a class on this and we'll have uh, a couple of, uh, quite a few people in the class and one of the byproducts of mixing the goat milk with the lye is actually you'll get an ammonia smell. And so I'm not for sure, I just wanted to be um, aware of you know people's sensitivities to that smell and also for you at home, if you wanted to go about this process there are a number of different recipes that you can find online but just be uh, aware of that um, byproduct whenever you're mixing the other thing is whenever you are um, mixing it on your own I would definitely suggest freezing your goat milk into small little um, ice ice um, ice cube molds just because whenever you add the lye, it actually heats up the um, the chemical process um, with that mixing will actually heat up the goat milk to almost a boiling point. And so you want to make sure that when you're doing that process, you're using adequate safety measures, eye protection, hand protection, and make sure that um, you are keeping eye on the temperature so that you do not scorch your goat milk. So on with our melt and pour. So as you see, I have a crock pot here. I've actually warmed up our um, base earlier. Um, you can use either a double boiler, double boiler method or you can heat it up in the microwave in 30 seconds spent, uh, stints. I wouldn't go any more than 30 seconds because again, um, the goat milk, it is a you know, milk product and we all know what happens whenever you get milk boiling, you know, it scorches. And so we want to make sure that we keep this in the purest state as possible. Um, if you do heat it up a little bit too much, you will see some darkening of the color itself. Um, and you would also, the, um, the milk would actually kind of coagulate a little bit more tightly and you would actually get a brittle um, end product. And so just be kind of aware of that whenever you are, um, you're tempering or you're melting your milk base. And so for what we need to do to prep our area, because like I said, I have my milk base, I've, I've got my soap base, I've got my um, heat resistant container here for um, mixing and pouring. I've got my silicon 
uh, mold here, but I also have a small thing of um, alcohol. And this is 90% isopropyl alcohol. And what we're going to do is this helps keep our um, molds from actually the bubbles forming. And so what you're going to do is going to do a quick spritz and do not worry about you know bubbles or anything forming because this is actually going to help um, break up that surface tension so you'll get a nice smooth finish for your um, for your actual um, soap. What we're going to do is we're going to start with our um, soap base and I already have ours warmed up here and I just kept it at temp here in the crock pot and I'm going to pour it grab, and so when we're heating our soap base, it's very important to keep it um, right about um, 160, maybe 180 degrees. Um, but any warmer than that will actually cause it to become more become pretty brittle. And so we want to make sure that we keep it at a constant temperature. And again, if you're um, we're heating it up in the microwave, do it in those 30 second spurts and that way you don't get um, overheating or your, um, get hot spots within your um, soap. So here's the pure base. And again, this is um, already pre-mixed with a lye. It'll give you a great lather, but there's also some things that we can add to it um, depending on what your personal needs are. We've got some coconut butter here, and we also have some shea butter. And these are two different additives that you can add to your soap to increase the moisture um, content of that. Um, because we're using goat's milk, it also al already has pretty good emulsifiers. It um, leaves your hands silky smooth. But if you wanted to add something of this nature to your soap, definitely, you know, experiment and have fun with it. We definitely want you to um, figure out what works best for you. So we've got that. We can also use different um, pigments or a mica um, based pigment to color this. We're going to keep things simple and we're going to keep things natural. So we're going to go um, not add those um, pigments to our soap. But it is important to keep in mind whenever you are adding your pigments, if you were to do that, that since this is a white base soap and not a clear base, such as a glycerin, um, your color is going to come out kind of a pastel. So just keep that in mind. What we are going to do today is we are going to um, put some smell into this. We're going to add some essential oils. And again, make sure that whenever you add essential oils that you use some that are cosmetic grade. Um, you want something that will you know, be okay to use on the skin. And so whenever you're adding your oils, you're going to make sure that you stir until you cannot see any oil streaks, but then stir for a few more seconds more. And that is because you do not want to get globs of oil within your mixture because that's going to make for, you know, kind of some um, crazy craziness within your soap itself but you also don't want it to form a film at the top so I think we're good there and what I did was I just added about one milliliter and we have a little bit more than probably worth um, of one bar of soap here and so we've got our essential oils the other thing that you can add well, there's you know tons of different things um, but we're going to add today is we've got some beautiful lavender here and this is just pure natural lavender you do not want anything that is actual that has added um added fragrance or anything of that nature nothing like potpourri just because those are going to be an irritant for the skin um, so use some use your natural resources here and so for this we're going to just add some here at the bottom of each one of our molds and another fun thing that you can do is you can actually layer this. And so I'm going to start and pour just a little bit in here, just enough to cover the bottom with our lavender. And here's where you can actually have a little fun with this and allow this to solidify just for a few moments. And then you can actually add different layers and you can do this with coloring. You can do this with uh, different fragrances, or you can just do this, you know, with your additives, however you want to go about it. 
And so the second additive that we're going to use for this is that uh, lavender definitely gives a nice calming um, fragrance and there's also some health benefits that some people tout with uh, in, a, in conjunction with um, lavender. But we're also going to use, and these are some coffee grounds, and these are not straight out of the coffee can. These are some that we've already been processed. I had it for my morning coffee this morning, actually for yesterday morning, and then I laid them out and allowed them to dry completely. You want those processed just because it just helps um, it meld with the soap better and you get a better, um, um, better quality with, through that. So I'm just going to add some of those coffee grounds. And so why would you add coffee grounds? So it's, coffee, of course, is filled with caffeine. It's a rejuvenator, but it also is a great, um, it's great to use to, you know, buff off that old dead skin. It's a nice um, natural exfoliant. So now that we've got that in there, I'm going to layer my top and you want to make it almost to the top and again with these um, these silicone molds they're super duper convenient very easy um, and because we are not at a boiling temperature it's not going to be too hot to touch um, but at the top just like we talked about at the bottom, we didn't want bubbles at the bottom of our soap. We don't want bubbles at the top of our soap either. So we're going to spritz it with that alcohol again, just to shake things up on that surface tension with that um, with the soap mix, and that way we won't have any bubbles at the top of our soap, and we'll have a nice clean um, finish for that. And some different soap. Bases that you can utilize are you know, glycerin based soap, goat's milk soap is what we use today. Um, but there, you know, the possibilities are endless. And the really important thing is, is that you take um, the time to really figure out, you know, what you're putting in your body, but then also what you're using on the outside of your body. Use your natural resources and get connected with our farmers so that they can best help you be the best you. For more information, feel free to contact North Carolina Cooperative Extension, Cumberland County Center. Thank you so much for joining us today.